MIAA Monday back again this week. MIAA Commissioner Mike Racy once again with me. Sir, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Chris. Good to see you again. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. We saw you last Thursday at the Missouri Western Fort Hayes State football game, and it's been quite the interesting couple of weeks so far to kick off the MIAA fall sports seasons. A lot of teams ranked in top 25 across volleyball, football, soccer, just a lot of good showings so far. A lot of good games, uh, you know, uh, teams playing well early in the season. You know, Chris, in football, um, yeah, I saw you on Thursday night at Missouri Western, and then on, on Saturday I was down at uh, Pittsburgh State for the uh, Gorillas matchup with Kearney. And, uh, you know, just some really good football games, uh, uh, good crowds, um, a lot of energy and yeah, as usual, uh, you know, the MIAA is tough uh, in football, tough in all sports, but uh, especially football this year to, to get a win and uh, got a lot of teams beating up on each other. Um, uh, this past week, I think uh, we had both Northwest Missouri and, and Pittsburgh State were ranked in the top 25. Uh, uh, Pittsburgh State will probably fall out and, uh, and Carney will jump in there and um, – uh, you know, Missouri Western uh, uh, had a big win and, uh, um, you know, lots of, uh, you know, lots of uh, Emporia State this weekend uh, uh, beats Central Oklahoma at home. Um, so just, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of good football and uh, a long ways to go. Uh, but it looks like, uh, you know, there's a lot of parity in the conference, uh, a number of good football teams, and uh, there'll probably be a dogfight to the end. You talk about a lot of parity in this conference. Uh, Nebraska Kearney coming into the top 25. I think it's the first time they've been ranked in about 10 years. Josh Lynn and what his staff's doing, incredible job up there. Having more teams kind of put themselves toward the top of the conference because we've seen Northwest, Fort Hayes, Central Missouri the last several years. But getting more teams to kind of fight for that spot, how does that help the MIAA as a whole? Because you have Nebraska Kearney fighting there. Missouri Western's trying to make that run toward the top. Poirier State's trying to get back up there. Just a lot, Pittsburgh State, a lot of teams, you know, jockeying for that position. Does that, does that help the conference, you think? Yeah, I think it does, uh, Chris. You know, I think uh, certainly the MIAA is recognized as a very strong football conference uh, success that uh, Northwest Missouri State and, and Pittsburgh State have had in the playoffs, uh, deep runs, national championships, but – um, as we know, you know, people that are close to the MIAA uh, know that there's a lot of good football. Um, you know, in the last, uh, the last three years, we've had uh, University of Central Missouri and Fort Hayes have won uh, conference football championships. And, um, you know, we've seen uh, in the last decade, we've seen uh, uh, Emporia State, uh, uh, Washburn, uh, Missouri Western, uh, you know, all be playoff teams. Uh, I think it's great to see uh, schools that uh, before they joined the MIAA had lots of success, like uh, Nebraska Kearney, like Central Oklahoma, um, haven't had the kind of success that uh, uh, their fans are used to the, the first few years they've been members of the conference. But you know, it looks like both programs have, have turned it around. And, you know, I think uh, when you look at our bowl record, Chris, the last four years, you know, something incredible like 13-0 and or 14-0 and in bowl games against other conferences. So um, I, think that, I think it's great uh, for football uh, in the MIAA that it, it is as competitive uh, as it looks like it's shaping up to be this year. And uh, it just makes uh, – teams that have historically been good um, just get that much better. Um, you know, Northwest has to, North, Northwest can't relax. They have to, uh, you know, they have to keep, uh, keep improving. And, uh, and certainly a lot of, uh, a lot of schools are, are out for uh, 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 the chance to win a championship. We'll talk quite a bit about the other sports throughout the next few weeks. I want to touch on volleyball too. I don't think people outside the conference that, that know how good this conference is, just how strong it is across division to Northwest Missouri State climbing the ranks. Nebraska Kearney's always there. Washburn. Just volleyball is another one of those sports that MIAA kind of dominates sometimes. You use the right word, uh, dominate, dominate, dominating. 
uh, is the best way to describe uh, MIAA volleyball. Um, you know, Pittsburgh State, uh, they went 3-0 uh, and or 4-0 and this past weekend in, in uh, some crossover matches. And, and yeah, they're not, they're not in the top 25. Uh, we have four MIAA volleyball programs who are ranked in the top 10 in the country in the latest uh, um, American Volleyball Coaches Association poll. Um, I think Kearney was at number three, uh, Washburn at number four, uh, Northwest Missouri State was ranked number eight in the country, and Central Missouri was ranked 10th. Uh, historically, Central Oklahoma has, has been a great uh, volleyball program. They're, they were not in the, in the top 25, but it's, uh, uh, you know, really from top to bottom, uh, MIAA volleyball is, uh, is very competitive. Just a couple of years ago, uh, Missouri Western won the MIAA volleyball championship. And uh, so it, um, you know, uh, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I think it was 2019, uh, uh, University of Nebraska Kearney uh, finished uh, runners up. Uh, in the national championship, and uh, it looks like we'll have uh, help have programs playing deep into November uh, again this year from the MIAA. And it kind of piggies back into the next topic I kind of want to get to. Um, ha have the top conferences for NIL compensation. It came out last week. Uh, you tweeted that out, and, and, and honestly, it's impressive. MIAA ninth in the country by conferences through all levels. I want to make sure I have this right. Through August 31st, it's right. It's number nine, right below Big East and right above Conference USA. So you had the MIAA with NIL deals, almost kind of leading the way across the country, not just Division Two. That has to kind of play off each other, right? How successful the programs are, and the NIL deals, even though it's kind of unrelated on performance based, I guess more than anything else, if that makes sense. Well, I think it makes tons of sense, and as we've talked on on this podcast, Chris, that, uh, you know, NIL, uh, as, as we move forward, will be an important part of recruiting and attracting uh, top uh, student athletes to come and, and, uh, and want to play on your campus. And uh, I think the MIAA has a great story to tell. Um, the statistics you're citing is from a, uh, uh, an NIL platform called Open Doors. And uh, they issued their first uh, NIL compensation report, the first 60 days of uh, name image likeness agreements. And uh, it was from July 1 through, as you mentioned, August 31st. And yeah, we were happy to see that the MIAA um, was uh, the top ranked Division II conference. Uh, there were two conferences from Division II uh, in the top 25, the MIAA in at nine, and the uh, South Atlantic Conference in at 21. And uh, yeah, the neighborhood that the MIAA is in, uh, in the ninth spot, ahead of Conference USA, ahead of the Atlantic 10, ahead of the Sun Belt, uh, ahead of the Horizon League, uh, the Southern Conference, the WAC, um, the Ivy League, um, and our coaches need to take advantage of that story, Chris. Uh, obviously, these are early statistics, but as you and I have talked, the MIAA has made name, image, and likeness a priority uh, for our member schools. Uh, early in June, we entered into our uh, partnership with Siegfried Bingham and our Empower You uh, NLI support uh, for our membership. We're, we're focused on uh, uh, rules education and compliance and helping our institutions know um, uh, what they can do and what they can do. Uh, but most important is helping our student athletes understand what these opportunities are and uh, helping them find ways to take advantage of uh, name, image, likeness, uh, compensation. We've talked about the, the MIAA as a destination conference. Um, we want uh, prospective student athletes, future students on our campus to understand that if you're looking for a place uh, to get a great quality education, um, a place to compete for national championships, 
and a, pl a place that really will allow you as a student uh, to maximize your personal brand and uh, and monetize your your name, image, likeness. MIAA schools are the place that recruits should be looking at. And uh, yeah, the statistics of uh, the MIAA uh, being in the top 10 and, and right behind the Big East Conference and uh, the AAC and and the Mountain West, uh, that was uh, that was a good news item uh, last week for uh, for us to brag about. This is probably going to be an easy question to answer for you, but why is the MIAA able to be top ten across all conferences in NIL? Is it based on when we see the four top ten volleyball programs in the country, the football programs year in and year out top twenty five? Does that kind of lend its way to making? The MIAA top ten and beating some of those Division One conferences too. Well, I think it's a uh, you know there's a there's a collection of of uh, reasons why uh, we're seeing this success, and I think we knew that uh, if if we emphasize this and if we if we didn't if we entered into an agreement where we had some some legal support, some expertise that we're helping to advise our schools. Um, you know, we'd be able to to have some success on this front and and help position our coaches in a way where they can they can go out and recruit and uh, attract students. But I, I think it's a, a number of factors. One, um, you know, the MIAA, I think, without question, um, has the, the best uh, uh, sports network broadcast network of any Division two conference uh, last year. Uh, we broadcast more than a, a, a thousand uh, live sporting events uh, on the MIAA network from all 14 of our campuses. And uh, that's everything from, from soccer to baseball to tennis to basketball, football, every, everything gets broadcast. And that provides exposure and opportunities for our, for our student athletes to, to show their stuff on the field. Uh, second, um, the MIAA at the Division II level, um, our schools have, uh, have led the country in fan attendance in football, uh, men's basketball, uh, women's basketball uh, the past 15 years. Um, that's, not, that's not five of the last 15 years or, or seven of the last 15 years. That's 15 of the last 15 years um, our fans have come out supported their teams and and led the country in attendance and um and uh and that translates to uh, uh fans and communities that are passionate about their schools and about their student athletes and that's what these nil deals at the division two and division three level and really at a lot of schools at the division one level they're not um you know they're not seven figure national product endorsements. Uh, they are uh, local and regional businesses supporting student athletes um, with uh, a couple of hundred dollars for um, autograph sessions, endorsements, appearances, um, and, and other activities uh, that our student athletes are able to take adv advantage of. Right now in Division II, the trend is uh, these agreements um, uh, be signed by by female student athletes uh, over male student athletes at a rate of two to one. Uh, about 60 per, 66 percent of the NIL deals that we're seeing at the Division two level are for female student athletes, um, and that's just the opposite of what we're seeing in Division one and Division three. And and certainly when you think about female. Uh, athletics and um, success that uh, female student athletes have, um, you know, uh, no question the MIAA is at the top. You think about the success that we've had uh, nationally in, in women's basketball. Uh, we talked about women's volleyball, uh, women's tennis, women's golf. Um, uh, the U University of Central Oklahoma, uh, three-time defending champs in women's rowing. Uh, so our female student athletes um, have great success on the courts, the fields, uh, track and field, another great place. You know, we've, we've got Olympians that are competing on MIAA campuses uh, in track and field. 
And, and these are the, the student athletes at Division II that are, are seeing great opportunities. Um, NIL, name, image, likeness opportunities will follow uh, programs that have the most success. Uh, products, businesses, they want to be affiliated with winners. And the MIAA is full of winners. And, uh, and I think that's part of the reason, Chris, why these early reports are showing that the MIAA is right up there with a lot of Division I conferences as far as the, the name, image, likeness opportunities uh, coming to our student athletes. The stats are pretty amazing and awesome to see that it's a uh, you know female student athletes two to one sixty six percent of Division two are, are going to you know female student athletes. Is there a lot of variables that play into that? Because we talk about football, men's basketball, and Division one kind of being those revenue sports, but we've seen I mean, rightfully so the last couple of years we've seen the college softball World Series start gaining traction. Everything start getting more momentum. Is there a lot of variables at play that make Division two female student athletes? receive or earn more NIL opportunities? Well, I think, again, you know, as I mentioned, I think a lot of it's driven by success and, and how successful and talented uh, female student athletes are in the MIAA, and that leads to opportunity. I think we've seen, Chris, a lot of, uh, a lot of businesses and companies that have, have uh, um, announced and, and looked at, uh, at female sports as really that uh, – uh, that place where maybe a lot of a lot of corporate attention in the past hasn't been placed and and really a new market uh, that companies and businesses uh, see opportunities with the thing that surprises me though is that we're not seeing that in division one or division three yet um, uh, we're, we're seeing it at the division two level and um, and that's fine you know if uh, if uh, if all of that corporate money wants to focus on Division two student athletes, um, I, I think that's great. And maybe maybe there's something to the type of experience that student athletes have in Division two, Chris. We've talked about it before. Division two really markets itself as a place where student athletes can have a balanced experience, um, where you can be a great student uh, involved in your community, uh, involved in campus leadership, and and be an athlete and 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 really skilled in your sport and and we talk about kind of this balance of of uh, athletics academics community engagement um, maybe more balance in division two than you find opportunities in division one and, and i would think that a lot of companies um, that are especially looking to associate with female student athletes um, would appreciate that balance that a female student athlete has in her life of, of being able to do everything and do everything well. And, and we have that in the MIAA, you know, we have very talented uh, male and female student athletes uh, that are great students um, competing for national championships and very committed to their, to their community. And I, I think, um, you know, lots of products, if they haven't discovered division two yet, uh, they need to find it, and uh, they're going to find a lot of uh, really talented uh, students that can help um, endorse and, and market their product. And, uh, and I'm happy that uh, the MIAA is out on the forefront of this, and um, so far so good as far as some of, the, some of the data points. So that's taking me in this direction of there's always talk about how would MIAA schools match up with Division One, whether it's FCS, FBS, you know, mostly FC, FCS for football and, you know, mid-major basketball just throughout there. And Coach Rich Wright at Northwest has talked about they couldn't find an FCS opponent last year. What keeps these schools at the MIAA level? Because it is the top of Division Two, and not trying to venture out maybe into uh, – a Division One conference, or trying to go Division One for that matter. I think there are two main things. One, Chris, is that I think that uh, MIAA schools love to win, and uh, and it's not just one sport. Um, you know, you look at a school like Northwest. Um, you know that in the last five years they've they've hung a national championship uh, uh, flag for football and a and a couple of banners for basketball. And now they're ranked in the top 10 in volleyball and 
Um, you know, they made the Elite Eight and and um, in men's tennis last year, and 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 that's uh, you know that's almost every one of our MIAA schools since I've been commissioner. Uh, we've had schools that have won, uh, I think seven different schools have won 13 national championships in eight different sports. And, um, you know, that's a lot of success that's shared across the conference. Uh, it's not just one school that dominates. And I think, uh, I think our MIAA schools and coaches and, and athletic directors like getting up every morning uh, like starting every academic year, uh, knowing that they're going to be in the hut to win national championship rings. And uh, if, if our schools were in Division One, that would not be the case. Um, you know, they'd be competing for, for conference championships and maybe to make an NCAA tournament. But that's not the same. It's not the same as being the best. And I think our Division Two, our MIAA schools enjoy that. The other thing is finance. Um, you know, our schools, 13, 14 are, are, are regional-based uh, um, universities. Um, a few of them have pretty decent size enrollments. Um, but I, I think when they, when they look at what some of their friends are spending to just be Division I, um, it's not, it's not fiscally responsible. Um, they're in conferences where they're flying all over the country. Um, they have, uh, they provided their fans with really very little, uh, in the terms of, uh, geographic rivalries. And, and I think our presidents and our boards, when they look at a conference comprised of, of outstanding regional universities in a four state area and uh, from sport to sport, uh, you know, er everyone fairly competitive um, and, and spending, you know, a third or a quarter uh, of what uh, schools uh, at the lower level of division one have to spend uh, on athletics. Um, I think our presidents and boards understand that they're, they're being good stewards of public money. They're doing the right things as far as being fiscally responsible uh, to the educational mission of the university, um, allowing those funds that they have to really be invested in a science building or in a library or in a new dorm um, and uh, allow athletics to be competitive at a level in Division II that allows schools to win championships. So uh, for those two reasons, I think really one to – uh, to really excite communities by being competitive and winning championships and two being fiscally responsible uh, and, and belonging to a, uh, a geographically centered conference are, are probably the driving factors that allow uh, many of our schools who could be division one decide that division two is the place to be. I'm sure we'll talk about that quite a bit more you know, throughout the year too. I want to get you out of here on this question though. Where do I think I've asked you this before in some form or fashion. Where does the MIAA go from here? I mean, you talk about NIL deals, it's number one in Division Two, it's top ten in the country in conferences, winning multiple national titles across multiple sports every year. I mean, top four, top ten teams in volleyball, football. Just from a league office perspective, what motivates or what do you guys aim for? I, I guess kind of where do, where do you guys say, okay, we can still get better here. We can still get better here. Or how do you approach that? Well, I think there are always data points that we look at, Chris, where we, where we recognize that we're doing pretty good, uh, but there's always room for improvement. Um, you know, whether that's, uh, uh, you know, how many uh, broadcasts, and the quality of our broadcasts that we're doing on the MIAA network to our student athlete graduation rates uh, to, um, you know, yeah, it's nice to win championships, but, um, you know, there's more out there to win. Um, so, you know, being, uh, uh, being even more competitive uh, in, in all sports than we, than we are already. And, and then doing things from the conference um, like NIL, um, like some of our risk management initiatives, 
um, you know, like some of the things that we're doing uh, in attracting new corporate sponsors and partners to the conference, like uh, McGowan Gordon Construction and 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 Mammoth uh, uh, Turf, uh, uh, Hollis Miller Architects, uh, Hush Blackwell uh, 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 Law Firm. You know, th- just go down the list, um, and and those partners. Uh, being in a position that they can uh, directly help and assist our schools uh, get better, uh, you know, better facilities, uh, you know, being better uh, uh, financially, being um, uh, better with risk management, you know, all of those things that that our partners that we brought uh, can help our schools with. And, and there are more of those businesses and corporations that we need to be working with. So there are there are always the, the dashboard, the data points um, where, yeah, we can brag and, and talk about how well we're doing, uh, but there's always room for improvement. And those are the things that we talk about at the conference office every day. Um, these places that, uh, you know, we don't take for granted and we know we're, uh, we're near or at the top in division two in a lot of these places, but there's, there's always, room to do better and um and that's what keeps us motivated looking forward to a fantastic week three of miaa football this coming week of course all the other sports fall sports volleyball golf uh soccer just so much going on right now it's hard to keep track of some time but miaa commissioner mike racy thank you as always for coming on thanks chris appreciate your support always good to catch up with you thank you no problem thank you